Good evening, everybody. Christian Toth here, aka Tired of the Hypocrisy. I want to talk about my latest experience with uh, with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, they came to my door yesterday afternoon. Um, it was kind of surprising because they just kind of showed up and then split like really quick. Um, there was a uh, the knock and well, uh, let me give you a little background on this. Uh, I had to downsize a while back and moved into an apartment, and uh, it's a lot smaller than the place we were living before. And uh, I've got really cool neighbors, though. The guy lives right next door to him and his wife and son, they're really good people, and uh. Typically, I can tell when the witnesses are around because I usually hear his door slam. <laughs> and uh, but I didn't hear a knock first yesterday, and so um, there's this uh, just this door slam and then a knock at my door, and so I thought it was the neighbor coming over to tell me something because uh, when I had gone to the drugstore. Uh, earlier, um, a friend of mine who works there said that uh, my friend had been asking for me, so he hadn't seen me outside and uh, was wondering if I had been to the store. And uh, my son right away pipes in and he says, "What are they talking shit?" <laughs> and she goes, "No, no, no. He was just wanting to know. He hadn't seen you. He hasn't." Uh, seen you outside or anything. He was just wondering if you're okay, and I told him I hadn't seen you in a while, so. Anyway, um, so I hear this slam and then the door knock, and I thought it was a neighbor, so I hurry over there, and then another hurried, hurried knock, like a frantic knock, and I thought, oh shoot, maybe his wife got sick or something, so I'm really heading for the door now in a big hurry, and I'm saying, hang on, hang on, I'm coming. And uh, when I open the door, there's this brother and this sister, and that I hadn't seen in probably over five years. And the brother just kind of looks at me and he goes, Ugh! he got like startled to see me. And then he just handed me this flyer, this little handbill announcing the, uh, the district convention or whatever they're calling it now. And uh, he said, uh, have a good day. And he just, they actually walked really quickly away. And I'm like, wow. I guess the word must be getting out that uh, that I'm some kind of an Adam Henry or an Alpha Hotel or something. But uh, the, the last time the witnesses were here was like last month. And uh, the time before was uh, right before the memorial. And so it was, uh, I wasn't rude to them, you know, because I feel for these people, you know. But uh, they uh, they weren't interested in hearing anything but just talking about the memorial and then giving out their little handbill and so um, when they do come I am going to try and pin them down on some Bible teachings of theirs but uh, actually, the last time that had been a couple of years since the witnesses had been through here and uh, a couple of years ago it was really hot outside I was cleaning out the inside of my car and uh, here come a couple of young witnesses and uh, I just looked at them like, oh great, here we go. And they, they walked away from the building next to ours and they, they started walking over towards me. And I said, here we go. And uh, they started talking about, you know, crime in the area and crime in the world and all. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm really busy right now and I really don't have time to talk with anybody right now. And to tell you the truth, I was afraid I was going to explode on them because a couple of years ago I was very, very bitter and very, very angry. And I didn't want to do that to these two kids. They looked like they were in their late teens, maybe early 20s. And uh, I, I really didn't want to, you know, be a mean guy about anything. And so I just said, I really don't have time to talk right now. Have a good day. And I ended it right there. And I got back in the car and I started moving my stuff out of there like I was and um, one of the little smart Alex he says uh, well I guess uh, you 
don't want to live forever in paradise then. And he kind of turned on his heel and started walking away. And I got smart Alec at that point. And I stick my head out the car window and I go, not if I have to live next to a bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, I actually stole that from a comedian I had seen like on HBO or Showtime like ages ago. And it was like, like perfect, you know, I thought it was hysterical. And they just kind of kept walking. They didn't even turn back and respond to that. But, uh, yeah, there's this brother. I mean, he just hurried away. Uh, and he's kind of like shoving his wife along, like, come on, let's go, let's go. And so uh, I guess it's, it's getting around that I'm, I'm to be avoided, even though I haven't sent a disfellowship or a disassociation letter anywhere. Um, I haven't uh, been disfellowshipped. I haven't been taken into the little the little room to be scolded or chastised for anything. I think it's just amazing. Uh, actually, what I've also noticed is my wife's family, uh, because she is so ill and bedridden most of the time, she has not been able to be at a meeting uh, in a long, long time. And the only uh, m meeting that she did go to uh, last year was when her dad died, and it killed her physically to get to the Kingdom Hall and to remain seated for as long because she's bedridden, you know, but uh, she was in agony, but she went to her dad's memorial service. And then we went to to the house and we sat with the family for a while and it was very tense, you know, and uh, I think it was horrible. Uh, her brother's wife saw her crying at the Kingdom Hall and asked her, don't you believe in the resurrection? Why are you crying? Don't you believe in the resurrection? What's wrong with you? And my wife, who had kicked her backside in several times before when, when they were young kids, went at her. As sick as she was, she was going to go and beat her down. And her brother got in the middle and kind of separated them and, and settled down my wife. And I was unfortunately far away. And I only got a glimpse of it. I wasn't able to actually step in myself and put his wife in her place. But uh, my wife just responded, Oh, really? Yeah, I do believe in the resurrection. Are they going to resurrect my dad tomorrow or today? Because if they're not, why don't you just shut up and get the F out of my face? Right in the Kingdom Hall. I thought that was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, uh, the family doesn't come around. We live in the same town as uh, an uncle, an aunt, and several cousins. And a lot of the family lives around here anyway, like within an hour's drive. And they come visit them, and they come visit the widow, my uh, father-in-law's widow. And we live on the same street as them, and they do not come visit us. And... Uh, I don't know, it's just uh, they're already pressuring her just for simply not attending meetings. I hate to think what they would do to her if they found out what I'm doing out here. But uh, it is so unchristian and unfriendly and unbiblical and inhuman the way that the Watchtower has these people behaving just because you are sick and cannot make it to a meeting. They did the same thing to my poor wife's dad when he was so sick. They used to just scold him, you know, why aren't you at the meeting, you know? And um, it's, just, it's just ridiculous the way that the society has these people trained. Um, when I started to leave, um, I did tell my wife that I wasn't going to be going back, and she said, well, I really don't blame you, but you got to do something. And I told her, I said, look, I said, I, I just watched a video yesterday, and it reminded me, uh, the, the guy said something similar to what I told my wife. The, the guy in the video, I can't remember his name right now, uh, really a, a good guy, though. Uh, he said uh, to the elders, they said, well, what are you going to do? Uh, where are you going to go? Are you going to go to Christendom? And he goes, well where I'm going to go is my business and that's actually the second question the first issue is 
to just go because you are a false prophet organization and you teach lies. So the first point of business is to leave. And so, you know, I didn't know where I was going when I walked out, but I knew I had to get out. And um, I'm glad that I found Jesus and uh, not that he was lost. I was lost one. But uh, there's just so much of a, of a better way of living when you're a Christian and not a Jehovah's Witness. Um, the people that I am learning from and the people that I'm getting to know, even ordinary worldly people who don't really go to church, aren't Christian, aren't of any really, you know, religious background really, they treat me so much better and with more genuine feeling than any witness ever did. And so in that sense, it's really a relief to just be out of the organization and life is happy now. I mean, the witnesses always ask, you know, well, they look at you like, like, oh, you poor thing or whatever. But you know what? I don't, I don't lower my eyes from them. If I see them on the street, I just keep my head up because I am happy. And you know, why would I want to feed their, their um, watchtower uh, appetite for, you know, uh, we're the truth and we're the only happy people on earth? No way. They can, they can, uh, they can go scratch, you know? So, you know, I'm happy. I'm learning about my Lord. I'm talking to other people about him. And um, my son, who was espousing atheism, just for the simple reason of our association with the Watchtower, has now started to kind of uh, give Christianity a little bit of a, a second look. And I'm happy about that. A friend of mine um, has been an atheist for most of his life. And I, I'm seeing at least him wanting to listen because he's seen changes in me. And uh, so he's willing to listen. And uh, he's not belligerent about it like he used to be with other Christians that he and I would encounter over when, when we were teenagers. We used to be pretty pretty harsh. But uh, no, he's, uh, he's at least receptive. And what I have learned is what I have felt all along. You don't turn your back on people. You don't pretend to like somebody because it's the thing to do. And then just be ready to drop that person when they don't believe exactly like you do. I think it's really sad that the witnesses have uh, that kind of upbringing and that kind of schooling and that kind of uh, living. I continue to pray for them. I love them as individuals. I love them and I do pray for them. And they would probably be angry with me if I told them that I do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Cause, uh, it's my time and my heart and I don't want to see them go to hell. So that's uh, that's my comment. Even though the witnesses run away from my door, one of these days I'm going to get one of them. I'm going to get them in here, and I'm going to sit them down, and I'm going to love them and show them how Christ can love them. And I hope that it happens soon. So everybody have a good evening, and uh, I hope to be back out here soon. Bye-bye for now.